Assalamu alaikum, my friends. So, today let's let's discuss masjids. What is a masjid for? Why is a masjid a masjid? What is it really designed for? Let's ask ourselves that. Because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think that they know what masjids and temples, churches, whatever name you want to give your building. A lot of people think they know what they're for. And yet, they still don't. So I could ask you, what do you think a masjid is for? And you'll say to me, it's for to go pray. No, it's not. No, it's not. I can prove it in the living. Ready? <clears throat> you're telling me that you're going to go build something because that is where you pray to God. Okay, so I could ask you, what did you do before you had the building? How were you praying to God before you had the building? Before you had a masjid, how did man pray to God? Oh, eh, this is their, our living temple. This is where Allah lives. He dwells inside the animated body, not a brick building. So if you're thinking that you go to a masjid because that's where you pray, then you don't even know what a masjid is for. And you've forgotten. This is, this is how far long lost in fitna and shirk the whole world is with their fucking religions. I'm gonna, I ask. I could ask any religion. Before you started making these shirk idols and shrines and buildings of bricks, how'd you pray to God? Okay, so we have that understanding that if you are telling me as a religious leader that masjids are created for you to go pray in, and this is what you're telling people, then you're a liar. Because I just proved in the living that you're a liar. You created in your own imagination that you needed a building to go pray in. You created in your own imagination. Before there was a building, I was already praying in my own body. Sometimes it'd be the sun was shining. Sometimes it would be dark and the moon was out. I don't know when I'm going to pray. I have no idea comes and goes my needs and my wants that goes for people who try to tell me that there is a time when I'm supposed to even pray get out of here with that nonsense shirk you created that you created all of this in your own imagination fact and I can prove all of it and we're proving it in the living of our own selves so why was a masjid and a temple these things built what were they really for? Well, they were built really in reality for the assembly to conduct affairs of the people for manner. We all pray to God. Everybody prays to God. You can pray to God anytime you want in your body. You can speak to God anytime you want. Anytime you want. You can talk to Him now. You don't have to wait. Now you just pray. Now, tomorrow, afternoon, morning, every you can pray all day if you want. Right? There's no set rule for this. That's ignorance. So the masjids, the buildings were designed for the people, the assembly. So when you need and you are in the part of the flock, part of the fold, and you are needing or are in want. When you go to the masjid, you inform the assembly. When you when you repented for something, you say to someone, "I am sorry." Yes, you knock into someone. Oh, I am sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I did not mean to do that. Accident. And we can have that all day. All day long we do it. I'm sorry. Oh, our son, our son. 
So in the assembly, it is a specific time when you're supposed to come amongst the people to ask for help from the assembly. So see, not all the time does the assembly gather to where every day the assembly, we see the assembly. You know, people work. People have jobs. People, other people have to do this or other people do that. But on a specific time, we can make a day, and they have. That's what we're doing now. They just don't practice it properly anymore. You create a day where the assembly comes out to discuss our needs and wants. And if you uh, need something, you ask the assembly. Well, usually you have your imam is the one who asks because he is the, the guide shepherd. So all the people know, you know, the thing they need, but then the imam, he is the one who puts it in the basket, like, you know, in the manner of, we are going to take a collection up today for such and such. He needs this or his daughter needs a new pair of shoes or something. If you can help whatever you can do, even if it's only a penny, one cent, donate to this for this guy's cause. So the people donate, the assembly. You know, if you got a hundred people and a hundred people give... Uh, even a, a dollar, not even a dollar. You know, think of how many shoes he got, he can buy. So think of you have a hundred people in your assembly and they all gave 50 cents or a quarter. That's still going to be enough for this man to buy his child a pair of shoes or anything. So needs and wants are taken care of in the masjid. That is what the masjid is for. You go to there, you, you go to masjid to, to clean yourself. Health, health, right? That's healthy. It's not about I'm going to clean myself and then go pray. It was never intended for that reason. It was for those who had no place to clean. The masjid, the temple, the place where God is, where you can use for clean collection for money for wants and needs services that are there right you understand this this is how it is organized but now everybody has taken the the building and they have lifted the building up as if it's a holy place as if it's if it's greater than you or I no they're not it's how you view them and what you did in your practicing of your shirk in them. Before, people didn't practice that nonsense. It was there for people to gather. They hear the word. They tell their problem. They try to find guidance or help. And then they go back home. They have to wait for the next assembly to gather together. So people don't even know how to use it anymore. Now, instead, what do they do inside it? They, they practice all sorts of kinds of ritualistic shirk and nonsense. And they even violating it. They use it as a place of storage. Or they use it as a... You all know what I'm talking about. Maybe the imams are using it as a place where they can have dates. Bring dates to them. Or, you know for their private use. All of these type of things play a role in what I'm trying to tell people, but but back to what it really is designed for. The masjids and temples were always designed for people to come to them to ask for help. Because the, there was usually a collection for this. It, it is in a manner of the 10% of tithing in this manner. It is God's stuff. 
So God, God does not look upon people as as their race, their color, their creed, their what religion are you. God does not look at people like that. You look at your own selves in that manner. Because you created what you're in. He created you. He didn't make your religion. He didn't write your books. He didn't pass your laws to do the things that you're doing. You did that to your own selves. <clears throat> so you, you, you're the one that is in the error of, of the... Because you have to understand the priesthood, this this thing that we're all doing does not come from man; it is God's. So everything that is within the masjid, the temple, it belongs to God. It is God's. We who are in it are His servants. We serve God in the masjid, as an imam or as a woman who wearing a uh, hijab. because she's serving in the temple. So the temple was a place for the people to gather, to get help from God. And since God is a spirit, God uses the people, and He brings forth the people, and the people do His work, meaning you gather this money for this cause, this goes to this, this goes to this, everybody has their tasks and their jobs and the things so when the collection gets collected it all is branched out to try to provide the necessities and the needs of its flocks and folds or its strangers who happen to stumble in a lot of times people don't even understand that that the masjids were really placed around on for when people traveled, they had a place to stop along the traveling journey to refresh themselves, to get guidance, to get help, food, their needs, and then they moved on. It wasn't usually. It was not. Oh, nowadays everybody building a masjid in their town. Now, not even everybody got about ten of them in their own community. Really, you need ten buildings in one place. It's, doesn't that cost more money to take care of 10 buildings? What, what are you doing inside 10 buildings that you can't do in one? What a waste of money. Because you don't know how to use these buildings that God gives. You know God is the one that, that put it in the heart for a king to build him a temple. He did not even desire one. What is this for? If you read King Dawad, what did King Dawad say when he built the temple? Why was such a place even built? Think about it. It's for the assembly. Whenever someone turns to pray, you will hear them, right? And not just turn to pray. If you're in need, you go. Walk on your journey there. This is what it was for. Now, like I say, everything has become a competition. Who can build the biggest masjid? Who can build the fanciest masjid? And that wasn't even what the fuck it was for. Never was designed for people to go inside to worship in it or any of that nonsense. It's God's place. It's His house. You're going to go inside his house and preach your foul word. If you don't have proper interpretation, it's foul. And you're walking around in his house lying. Or you're walking around in his house taking from him what belongs to him and you're going to take that which is for his assembly. You're his servant and you're going to take it for yourself to buy a new robe. Did you ask the assembly that did you tell the assembly you needed a new rope? Because that's what it's always for. It's for the knowing of the assembly that someone is in need in our fold or our flock of our sheep. 
you know, you're a shepherd, one of your sheep get injured, you stop everything, you go, you pick your sheep up, you try to soothe your sheep, help your sheep, get your sheep well. So people don't even know what a masjid is used for anymore. Nobody does. I don't that that's why I know who I am. I know I'm Imam al Mahdi. Who the fuck are you people? I know I'm the rightly guided one. I know I'm a proper Imam that teaches proper ways. I know who I am. Who the fuck are you? Ayatollahs and all you Imams and all you priests, Kohens, whatever. Who the fuck are you? You running around acting like me, thinking that you can because you got a certificate that says you can? What if I start going around telling you, you can't? Because only God makes a imam. You don't get to just choose, oh, I wake up one day, I'm going to be an imam for my job. That's what I'm going to go be. I'm going to go to school and get my degree. And then I'll get a paycheck from the temple, the masjid, and I'll work there. That'll be my job. You're not a fucking shepherd. You chose to do stupid shit like this. You're choosing it. Then you complain about what you choose. Never, ever did a prophet want to be a prophet. Never, ever did a holy man who want to have word of God choose to be like that? Nay. Allah grab them and make them what they are. That's why the world is so corrupt. Because people think that they can just, I, I can go and teach people the word of God. They think they can. Why? I got a certificate. I, I know how to teach the doctrine because they, they told me how to do it in the school. I know how to do it. Who told you to do it? Did God? Did Allah tell you to become one? No, He didn't. You did it. And now look at you. You're foul. You're dirtying the, his, his house up. You're dirtying his house up, spreading lies, molesting the sheep, who knows what you're doing to the sheep now? What are these guys up to? Like I said, I know who I am. I don't care. I don't need you to know who I am. But I I want to know who the fuck you people who run around trying to claim to be in such the order of Melchizedek. You know, that's the order we are in. The order of Melchizedek. Again, so I ask all these ayatollahs and imams and, and kohens and priests, and who the fuck are you people? So now you have a, a greater understanding of when I say to you, these people don't, don't these people that are your shepherd or supposed to be their your guide or whatever, they they're not they don't even know how to do it properly. They don't. Look at how I've told you how the building is supposed to be used, what it's supposed to be for. And if you use it in that manner, your, your sheep should not have any problem. As a matter of fact, your flock should be very prosperous and healthy. Right? And everybody knows each other and like, like, loves each other, helps each other, doing to each other what they want each other done for themselves because they're all helping one another when they are all, uh, in need, whenever it is the call has come out for someone you see now how it really is supposed to be these people they'll hoard up the food they'll hoard up the money they'll go buy themselves a fancy car fancy robe this or that Duh, they become so fat look at look at all the Taliban big fat motherfuckers calls them they call themselves mullahs and their motherfuckers look like fucking fat ass donkey fucks out of weight, overweight, out of shape, fucks. Big fat belt, what they eating all your food? <laughs> you're poor, you're, you have no food because Taliban, the mullahs and the imams are eating all your food. <laughs> 
because you think that they know what it is that they fucking doing. They told you that they can guide you properly. That's what they told you. <laughs> now look at you. <laughs> you think I give a fuck? I don't give a fuck. You chose it. That's your ignorance. You following along with what that man said tells you to do? That's your problem, not mine. Guy can't even speak common sense. And you're going to follow these kind of characters? <laughs> Either that or they, 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 they see uh, how America is and then they go, oh, we'll be like America. We're going to, we're going to put a, a movie star or an actor or a sports player to be our leader. <laughs> America did it. We'll do it too. <laughs> uh, how'd that turn out for you? Rainy day today, shoulder, so I can take a little medicine and I have nothing to do again. Another day, nothing to do. I hate these days. Why well, I give chutbah, chutbah on this day to teach you about this. You know, and, I, and people out there, when you listen to my words, you know, like, like for instance, because for me, people need to understand, it's the first time I'm understanding it myself. These words that come out of my mouth, they're not, they don't, they're not mine. It's on me. The spirit has overshadowed me. And it speaks great wisdoms and truths that I don't fucking know. I'm a, like I told you before, I'm a man of war, a worm, a sinner. I have no fucking idea why God made me know these things. I don't know. I didn't, like I said, I did not ask to be imam. I didn't ask. I didn't wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to go to school to teach people about God. <laughs> what? No, I never would like that. Now, when I was a child, I grew up in my way and doing stupidities and, and pretending to be things like kids always do, but this, this was put by God upon me. You understand? It's, uh, people ask, what is the charter? What is your charter? charter whatever that means they want my proof they say what is your proof you're a mom Mahdi what's your charter what is you what, is, what are you who are you da, 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 da. fuck you who's who are you I said like I said before I know who I am I can explain to who I am and the, how I am in the living is proof that I am who I am right you understand this the question is is who the fuck are you people See, that's where you people are wrong. See, it's your world who's what's all, what's all fucked. Not mine, not the one I'm in. My world's a okay. Hey, okay. We know the truth. I have the truth. I have the wisdom. I have all the word of God. I know what goes on. I know how he wants things to be done. He tells me. So I know who I am. And I know what my world is about, and it's good. It's good, 100% A-OK. -okay. However, what I'm concerned is when I look, came to this world and I looked in this world, I see how you guys are performing the function of the heavenly ways, if, you, if we could say it, you know, the godly way, the godly manner, a godly man, a godly way of life. I look and I come here and I look and see how you guys are practicing the the way that God taught us. And I'm looking at you, I'm thinking, who the fuck are these people? You understand what I'm saying, right? These people make no sense of why, how they're claiming to be imams or ayatollahs or mullahs or any of this stuff. Shit. How are they claiming any of it? Because of a certificate is how. They get a certificate. Look at me. I graduated today. I graduated today. I got my certificate. Look. Here, I graduate. It tells me I can I can I can teach now. My certificate tells me I can teach.
That's the, what their proof is. And then you could go to them. I go to them. I, 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 it, it, that's why they, they, nobody can stand in front of me and debate with me because then I'd go up to them. I'd say, who told you to teach this manner? Or then I'd ask them, we're teaching this story, but that story is a wrong story. This is the proper interpretation. So who is it that guided you to teach the sheep this lie? Your school? So how many people has the school taught not properly? And then look at the sheep. Now you wonder why you guys are the way you're, you all are acting? You're fucked. I see this one girl all the time, this one guy, girl, I'm not sure, always complaining about their race. Tajik, Hazara, Patun, Patun, you know, always complaining about, about this non ethnicity, ethnicity. And I tell them all the time, who gives a fuck? You got bigger problems. You're living in a fucking lie. You're surrounded by teachers who are fools. And you think that what you're saying is going to have any wisdom to it when you're just repeating that which knowledge was taught to you. So if the knowledge that was taught to you is foolishness, how the fuck are you going to stand in front of me? You can't even understand simple flesh and the meaninglessness of it. You can't even live in it the way it's supposed to be lived in instead you creating in your imagination all sorts of kinds of crazy nonsense shit to practice with your flesh or to to do or not do this or that you know all that nonsense shit and then you're making it all up in your imagination and then you go around they all teaching everybody else to be the same way same manner it's teaching different than what god taught It's like in America, I told them. <coughs> the biggest racist, the biggest racist is the one who points out to the rest of the world who they are. In America, the race that does it is always the African. They always like to point out who they are, what they are. Did you, do you know I'm black? Do you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that? Hey, did you know that? Hey, hey. Who gives a fuck? But this is what they, 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 they try to force you in, into. You go to America, you see Chinese people and white people, Caucasians. The Caucasian guy doesn't go to the Chinese guy. Hey, do you know I'm white? You know I'm white, right? I'm white. White. What are you? I'm white. The Chinese guy never goes up to the Caucasian and says, Oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm Chinese. I'm Asian. You know, right? I'm Asian. I'm Chinese. I'm Asian, right? You know, uh, 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 I, you, you're, it's because I'm Asian, right? Right. How come nobody else does this? This group here in America always doing it. It's clearly seen constantly, every fucking day. They want to remind us of what the fuck their flesh is. Like we give a shit. Nobody else does that. <laughs> now let's go to Afghanistan though. Let's go to Afghanistan. Now this is going to show you in Afghanistan how much more foolish you are in the way you're acting than the African. Now we know the African is way off base. Ignorant in this. If you're acting worse than them, that makes you all, oh, you understand. You're very stupid. I'm Tajik. I'm Pashtun. I'm Hazara. Oh, you all kind of look the same to me. I can see a little bit of Asian in some and a little bit of this because of Genghis Khan and different fashions of flesh. That's everywhere. But I don't see you as being completely different, different in the manner like, holy shit, that's an African, that's an Asian, and that's a Caucasian, 
and that's a Middle Eastern. Well, we can see the big difference in those races of people, right? That's why we have a race of people. You want to talk ethnicity. Ethnicity. That's nonsense. So all of you is the same. <laughs> a bunch of mutts like me. You know I'm a mutt. Mixed, mingled up fuck. A big fucking mingled up big mess of meaningless nothingness flesh that's been cursed by Allah to die the death before 120 years. You think I'm really worried about my fucking ethnicity? Who taught you this shit? Yeah, you see, now you're, you're, you're understanding that your, your nation is starting to get other nations' movies or music, ideas or concepts, and you're trying to get an identity of yourself. You want an identity. Because you don't know who you are. That's understandable. They don't know who they are. Hell, they, they, they even in a religion... That never was their religion. Ever. They got conquered by Arabs. And they were forced into Islam. <laughs> now you got a whole bunch of people in Afghanistan. Following a religion that is not even part of their culture. <laughs> they made it to be. Because of the conquering. So, when I look at you, and you guys are trying to act like uh, other nations in a manner of the way they act, I look at you guys, I laugh. I'm like, look at these fucking people in Afghanistan. They think they're different race. And they're not. They're the same. <coughs> they fucking look like me. The majority of them all look like me. Do I, do I look like an African? No. Do I look like an Asian? No. Do I have traits of these type of genetic people? Yes. Why? Because I'm a mutt. You want to fuck with me? I'll fucking put all of you in your place. Because I'm a mutt, I can put all of you in your place. And that's what Afghanistan, that's your heritage. You don't realize it. You're a mutt. You're like Israel. Israel was nothing but a big fucking mutt. You do realize this, right? Israel was a big mutt. Look at all their wives. There's a different ones throughout the history. Abraham had Sarah and Hagar. And then when Sarah died, did he have another one? So think about that. Abraham himself had that many wives that we know. Jacob, how many wives? Jacob, he had Leah and Rachel. Who knows Who knows if he slept with uh, his servant girls? It's okay for them back in those times. That's part of their... Now you wouldn't do it. Now they get mad. Well, you know, Sarah got mad when Abraham did it to begin with. She regret later on. You see how she acting. She said, oh, it's okay for you to go do that. And then when the baby's born and now, uh, now she's pissed about it, right? So, hello. Shalom. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. So now you see that in Afghanistan, they complaining about this. Acting. That's, and the reason they're acting in this manner is because they're trying to find uh, a place in, in the society. And I, that's where I tried to explain. You, you have a place. You just don't know. You had no, don't know, have any idea of just exactly where you are in the place. So you're like Israelites. A big bunch of mutts. Fighting constantly. You know Israel. Israel always fighting constantly throughout history. In their own family. <laughs> you know, 
Do you know what they did to uh, Joseph? Yosef? You call him Yusuf. You know his own brother? They they took him, they put him in a well. They pushed him in a well. Left him for dead. Then they grab him up out of the well. They, 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 they sell him as a slave. That's their own family, right, doing this. So you have to understand, think about this. When you're fighting about your stupidity of ethnicity, you better get your story uh, uh, straight. You're like Israel. That's what Israel was, a great dirty mutt, a big mingled up fuck. That's what we are. And you can see the way they treat to each other in throughout their history. Oh, now look at Afghanistan. Why are they treating each other? <laughs> they acted just like Israel. I wonder why. Oh, because they are. <laughs> they think they're Arabs. <laughs> they're practicing uh, Arab religion. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 I'm serious. I'm serious. Look on the map. Look on the map. Afghanistan is here. Not too far away. Not too far away. It's Israel. Way over here. Way over here. It's Arabs. <laughs> Look. They got they got Benny Benny Israel. Who don't even know they're Benny Israel. <laughs> they think they're Tajik, Hazara, Pashtun. They're so confused. They forgot who they were. Now, now they're following along in a religion that goes to Arabs. Fighting about their ethnicities. <laughs> and in reality, I, how can I, in reality, their priest is Isa. Like if you if you were to go and look at like for Islam, you know it's Arabs. So for an Arab in Islam, their leader is going to be an Arab man. If he's not, then you're not following God. God said, Don't let a foreigner rule over you. Don't let a foreigner rule over you. That's in the Torah. So it's told by God not to let that happen. So who are ruling over Islam in the Islamic world, you see, that is Arabs. Who ruling in the Jewish world? The Jews? Well, the Roman knows. They ain't really Israelite. See, that's where I try to explain. These, uh, these people who are fighting about their ethnicity are really Israelites. They're the remnant of the real, the real tribes. From Jacob. Meanwhile, you got a group of Judeans, not Galileans, Judeans at the time, when Rome was there, who had, they they fight so they have sex and they rape and pillage, and they created these Zionist Jews now in a manner. They have a Roman; their nose is Roman, and they say they're Jews. I, I call them the the Ashkenazi or the Roman nose. That they, they, they're pretending. They call themselves Israels, but they're not. They're Jew, yes, in their religion, but of their culture and heritage, they were Judeans that were blended with Romans. All right? So understand that. Most of the Israelites, they, when they're sending into exile or they fle flee, they fled to the mountains. Oh, who is living in the mountains? <laughs> Where are the mountains at? If you go to the Middle East, you know, you got Israel. Israel you got no big old mountains, maybe some hills. They're by the ocean. The ocean sets by Israel. And you got Jordan and you got the desert. Where are the mountains at? Oh, over there in the Afghanistan area. Oh, that makes more sense in the living 
that when the Israelites are fleeing from oppression that is all constantly around and from their own damn families, <laughs> where they're hiding, that's where they would run. So that's where this area is really Corazon, Corazon is the, the terminology for the they're not even Corazoni. They they call them they call them people like this, but they that that comes from Khan. because uh, the K, the Khor and the Khan, this this these uh people who invade the lands and uh conquer their people and stuff then they 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 blend in the cult culture and their ways and laws and this and that that all happen so they go by the this this other name that they're not even they're not even fully aware that that is Khorasoni is Christian the Christianity is Khorasoni they don't realize it but but from this, I've tried to explain that that from this, the Khorasoni, the original people, they're following uh, the Mosaic and Abrahamic. It was very Abrahamic, more in the, that area. Because Moses was the law that was the more directly in the villages or in the where the people lived majority of the assembly. Those that lived on the outskirts, the mountainous ranges, or in the, the shepherds of the field, these type places, that didn't really come into the villages much. Most of these uh, were guided underneath the Abrahamic law. The promises of, through Abraham. That is why you get this, this uh, corruption in the Arab nation when they conquer Khorasan. Christian ideology we I, I got to emphasize that because these Jews the, these these Khorasonis were people that had become from that very place of Israel and Rome at the time during the time of Nero and these places when Nero started to kill start killing Christians the Khorasonis of the land they fled they fled into the mountainous ranges the original religion of of the Khorasanis is very very close related into what the uh, which they call the Jews Jews today but that's not that's that's Zionism so when I want to say I have to refer back because the it goes back to the, that priest again, Isa, the one that God make a priest, Allah make him a priest forever. He swear, I will not repent forever in the order of Melchizedek. You, Isa, are priest. So these Khorasanis and these Christians and some Jews, they're following a man, Isa, named Yasua, Yasua. Christians called Jesus they're following this man his teachings the Lamb of God the Isa Lamb later that is known by this is where you get into people's tongues so you're deriving from a nation out of the out of Israel this stuff is spreading out you got Gnostics coming out lying about Jesus saying he didn't get married and he took up daughters and sons Mohammed's is way out here. Mohammed's Arab. He's way out here. He finally gets a run in with Khadija's family, which are bishops of the Isa. So everybody needs to understand where all this is. Why do you think I'm going to go to Israel? Why would I go and kick kick down the doors of Jerusalem and take it back for my master? Why do I straighten out Turkey, Constantin Constantinople? Why do I go back there and straighten out that whole little mess? Because it's all it's all a big mess of confusion because certain people in the languages started creating word-based things 
upon meaning of what they were teaching. So how can Yahshua, Aramaic, Aramaic Yeshua, how can that become Isa? If his mom, if your mom call you Poya, that's yes, your mom call you that. And let's say you're very famous, Poya become famous amongst the big time. Now all of a sudden the group comes along and they're going to clay take you as a famous person and they're not going to say Poya. Now they're going to call you by another name. How is that? How can you do that? But isn't that what Islam has done? Yeah, you tried to say that is correct. <laughs> you're all you're all wrong. I'm just saying telling I'm just saying that. You're all wrong. So that the whole terminology of words. Arab taking Yeshua, making it Isa. Taking Isa, the word Isa, and the word in Arabic for lamb, Ikhlam, Elam, Elach, Ikhlam, for lamb. Taking Isa and the word for lamb because. An Arab man is told by Khadija's Jewish, uh, I shouldn't say Jewish, it's more Khorasani type family from that time period migrating out from that area, spreading the gospel of the Anjil forth from its original place of Nazareth's. Bethlehem of Judea, Galilee, that area, sending out the fathers, the Mumins, sending them out to teach the Injil. So you have to understand, as a Muslim, you need to realize this as well. You got the Torah. We had the Torah. Okay, we didn't have an Injil yet. We had the Torah. We had the law. We used to stone each other and kill each other. Fact. We don't do it anymore because why? We have another book called the Injil. It says we don't need to follow that law no more. That that has been fulfilled. We don't do that shit. So you're standing there in Afghanistan stoning somebody who did a sin? How can you say you following Prophet Isa if you practicing that fucking shirk? I'll rip all the Taliban's beards right out of their fucking face. For that stupidity because right there you see it in the living you can't claim if isa is a prophet telling you that that is shirk even stopping the priest from stoning a woman in the jail gospel is written and yet you're still going to follow that law as if it's the correct way you're in shirk sin fool you're a fool. You're a shark. You don't even realize it. Because you're ignorant of the story. Because you don't have the same story. Because all you motherfuckers went and you tried to go and take the original story and you broke off and you started creating your foul ass fucking religions. I have a degree. I can teach it now. I went to school. I'm going to teach you what they told me is what God said. Fuck that. That's bullshit. Like I told you before, Allah raises up imams. You're not an imam just because you went to fucking school. You chose it. Real prophets, real priests, real imams get picked by Allah himself, not by fucking men who graduated. Get out of here. That's why, again, I can say, I know who I am. When I say, Anahamahdi, I speak truth because I know who I am. Who the fuck are you? Don't tell me who I am or who I can't be. You're the motherfuckers in error and wrong. You, you're in the world of living a weird life, a weird belief. My world is normal. Yours is the one that's screwed up. 
And I know it this by looking at uh, upon all of you. I see it. In the living, it proves to me in the living, you're all fucked up. So that's why I, who the fuck are you people? Claiming, claiming to be close to my master. Claiming to know my father Abba. You don't know nothing. You know what you come in your own name. That's what you know. You come in your own fucking name of your own fucking religion and you all fly banners. All of your banners have nothing but your religions on them. Look at them. Taliban. Look at the Taliban banner. It's a big lie. There is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his prophet. That's your religion. You come in in the name of your religion? That's on your banner? <laughs> this is the banner. This is the one that comes in the name of God. What's the name of God? Not Muhammad. Muhammad's not God. So why you got Muhammad on your banner? He's a man. There's only one that was spoken into existence by Allah and given as a gift. Only one. And his name was Yahshua. Isa. And he's the begotten. The begotten. He come from God. You understand the word, that word right here? It means you're coming out of him. Out of who? Out of God himself. The only thing that comes out of Allah are the word. Who's the word? He's the word. That's the word. He come mean. Mean. From Arabic, min, from kalamat, 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 min, Allah. So you can look at that in that manner. It's in the definition meaning. When you're saying kalamat, min, Allah, when you say it, this is what you're really saying. In the imagery, of the Ark of the Covenant. You know, Musa had an Ark of the Covenant that they actually physically had. They carried it around. It was called the Ark of the Covenant. It had the law inside it. They carried it. It was just a... It was made of inanimate. It was not living. It was not a living. But Allah was there. That is where Allah was, in the Ark. He in it, the Holy of Holies, behind the curtain, the veil. Musa, only one that could go back there was Musa. He talking to God. Kalamet. God speaks using words. This word is Kalamet. That's what he calls his word. As a gift to Miriam, you can, the, the Jibril, Jibril say, you call him Emmanuel. And the more meaning, uh, the meaning, Emmanuel means God is with us. God is with us, right? Not here. God's with us here, now, right now, here. Call the word, the word, I'm going to give you a gift. It's going to have my spirit and my word. You're going to call it Emmanuel or Yahshua. Yahshua, Emmanuel, they mean the same. They mean the same. So you get teachers to say, Oh, look, they wrote Emmanuel here. Oh, but how come they call him Yeshua here? Well, how come you call him Isa? Look at all your fucking sh names you all changing up. And you have the audacity to come to me to tell me that Emmanuel and Yeshua are spelled differently? Of course they are. They're different language. But they mean the fucking same. You understand? So, I don't care when we're looking at Allah, when we have Allah, Allah, you don't have no image. 
We ain't looking at nothing. We're knowing the meaning of what we know of him. The meaning. So this word, this Emmanuel, this meaning, Yeshua, this gift that Miriam's going to have, this Isa, Yeshua, this gift that comes from, that is begotten by, who given the gift? Hey, hey, wait a minute. I'm, getting, I'm going to give you a baby? Wait, wait. I did not have sex? Where did I get this baby from? How am I going to give you a gift? Who's it from? Who's it belong to? Who's it from? Yasua. Kalamet mean from, begotten, owned, bought. How many meanings can you make it clear for you to understand this? Who is it? Alas. That's who it is. So this banner is the name of God. It's God. It's not religion. Everything you do, you do because of this. Everything in anybody's religion, they're doing it because of this. So, no, the Taliban got the wrong banner. That's not the right banner. ISIS, oh, that's, they way off. They ain't got the right banner. Nobody has the right banner. I'm, I'm the only one with the right banner anyway. And I know it for a fact because I know it says the name of God on it. Get out of here with your lies. Can't teach me shit. Besides, you're in fitna. How are you going to tell me about your religion? You don't even have proper translations of it. You're in fitna. How dare you tell me a, a, a anointed imam by God how are you going to tell me about your damn religion and I'm not trying to be boastful I, I hate it uh, because if I look I don't like to look in a manner if I look in a manner that's a great or people like it oh wonderful look at him he's this I don't like that because it, that's that's not good. That's not good either, because uh, only God gets praised and glory. Only God. It, it, it has nothing to do with me. It's all about this. It's all about this. I only reap because I I I am given this. Now I reap what this gets. Like uh, so if so if it's a wonderful thing, then I get blessing from it. You see that it's not it has it has nothing to do with me at all, like I I I cannot I. I can't even explain it. It's like I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm I'm. It's hard for me to under to to explain, but in that manner you can understand it. That. The only reason I look. Or am going to be me, or who you you really read about in your hadith? The only reason is because of this. It's nothing to do with me or who I am or what I am or any of that. I am a a worm. Like I said, had not it been for him, I'd be dead. I'd already be dead. Had it not been for God. Fact. That's a fact. I want me to prove it. I can. I tried to take my own life. I got. I got this scar here. I'll show you. No, if you can see. So, I done that before. Right there, I did that. I've had enough. I don't want to be in the world. I even did it right here on my arm. I cut this arm. I cut it. I don't want to be. 
I was a little kid. I was little. Understand? Very young. Most kids are not doing this. But I was. Very young age, I used to try to kill myself. I was only like a eight, eight years old. Seven, eight. So that's why I say, this is why I am. It has nothing to do with me or any of that. So if you if you people are thinking about me, Imam Mahdi, and you're praising me or you're doing something, give it, give that back to who it goes to. Leave me alone with that nonsense. That be that's embarrassing. You're 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 putting shame upon me. When you when you when you give me recognition for something that is not does not belong to me, I'm just reaping what something else has already sown. It was sown from the foundation of the world. Belongs to God. So just for that, we, we talk about that. So these people, don't know, they don't know who they are in reality. That's why they're fighting and arguing. And I try to tell them who they are. They don't listen. Well, they can't listen. They don't go to school. <laughs> Damn, man. If you don't go to school, you're going to be dumb. You're like your next generation growing. The next generation, next generation. They're going to be stupid. That is now you understand that's why that's one of the reasons you forgot who you are. Because they they oppressed you and wouldn't let you learn. The only thing they told you was is the when the Arabs conquered you, the Arabs conquered you and told you, You learn Islam, that's all you got. Nah and you put on your burqa ah, or we'll beat you. That was new to you a long time ago. You did not live that lifestyle. Now you live it. And then, and then they tried to fuck with America and America came after them. And then we spent that 20 years in your land. So you have to look at it in this manner. When I speak, sometimes it's not that I'm not saying that we did this. I'm saying the spirit of God who moves nations into doing what they do, he does it. So God put America right in your fucking nation for a reason. Don't you see why? Why, why would a dumb fucking religion group who, whose percentage is not nuclear... Come and try to attack America, which is nuclear, and is very Christian, very Corazoni, if you really want me to put that terminology in your fucking face. Corazoni is not a fucking race, neither. Corazoni was a belief. It was the Injil, the following of it, made you a Corazoni. That is the truth. So, these people went to, 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 to attack. So God spared him moving a nation right on your land. Movements have come right to your Kafar land. Because you you taught to reject Isa as as son of God. That's your not understanding the Gnostic story because they don't give you that storyline. So if you had if you had full schooling, you'd understand what I was talking about, and then you'll understand great how religion lies to everybody. Doesn't matter what flock or fold you go to.
It's all shirt business. Prophecy. It's like I said, I know who I am. I know God made me a shepherd. Who are who the fuck are all these guys walking around the earth claiming to be a shepherd of the people? Teaching them lies of their storylines. For years they've been doing it. So God rose me up. That's why I'm here. I, I don't know these things. I just these are things that God is telling me. I did not know this shit. I was like you a long time ago. That's same. I didn't know this truth. <laughs> it's like it was told to me. I don't even believe it myself still yet. I'm still comprehending like, wow, you mean we all been in a lie? It's all fucked up? What the? And then that's when I say, God, why am I here then? What the fuck? I'm, I, I don't... If this is true, if everything is true, what the fuck are we here for anymore? I'm not going to be in this fucking world with these fucking goofy ass motherfuckers because they all, everybody would be considered a kafar. Everybody would be considered the Jal follower. That People don't realize that. And they they, they say, oh, the Dajjal is going to trick you He's going, you're already tricked. You're born into it. That's how it's a trickery. You you were born. You don't know you're born. So the more that you don't get education and knowledge about everything, then you're not going to have the full glory of Allah. You know, if Allah created all people, all the people are Allah's. All people. Everybody. Then you can't say that what Allah is doing with his people over here is wrong. Oh, you're a Buddhist. That's not the right religion. You have to become a convert into Islam. You, you, that's not you. You did not make those people, nor did you teach those people their fucking language or anything. God did all that. That belonged to Him. So you're you're sitting there in your bold face, fucking shameless face, fuck you manner. You're going to tell Allah, Hey Allah, all these people in the wrong religion. You got you got all of them in the wrong religion. They all need to be in the my religion. What, what? Do you see how stupid that sounds? <laughs> As if God don't know about his own damn plans. That's where you, you're the stupid ones. You're the stupid ones. And you're fighting about ethnicity and religion. You're fighting all day long on this fucking dummies. So you understand now a little more about some truths that get your brain thinking. Because uh, it's truth. Stuff that people don't talk about, don't have never heard, you know. When people say it, it's like, whoa. You can't deny it. You're, you've got to change. It's, it's like a shifting of the path. There's no more way this way. You keep going this way, you're plumb stupid. The path goes this way now. It's over here. So you got to go over here. Otherwise, you keep going that way, you're going to fall off the cliff. There's a cliff over there. You keep going that way, you fall. <laughs> you got to come back to the right path. And get on it the right way. But like I say, everything that God had been doing with his flocks and folds, it wasn't wrong. It was there for its season. You know, if you, if you have... Uh, you have fresh fruit, fresh fruit, or fresh vegetables today to eat. Let's say you got some vegetables that are five days old. You can still eat them. They're good still. They're five days old. You've got to eat them now before they get worse. So, for instance, religion of the world, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, Judaism... 
these are food that Allah has set in in his kitchen for a while they've been there for a while it's not fresh he has fresh but you always eating the five-day-old stuff afraid you know you what you once you get a normal diet you're eating it all the time I'm eating Islam I'm eating Christianity I'm eating Jews I'm eating Hinduism I'm eating this all day long you're not changing you're not eating anything fresh nothing fresh and new same old story same old prayers same old shirk and now you have opened up the refrigerator and I've realized that what you had been eating is now out of date out of date is 2023 how can you stay reading in a book where they fight in war using swords we fight now we don't use swords we have bombs or we have viruses we have we have gas we fight different way now so why are you still going to stay in a season of eating this concept for its time it was good in its time now it's out of date you don't eat it you don't practice these things they're not law anymore we don't fight in these manners some of these things we don't even do anymore they're not the, uh, they're not called customs anymore to us so how can you claim in a religion try to claim a law if that law that was there for its season is no longer functional in the time and season that we live you'd have to have it nude you have to eat new food so you open that refrigerator up and here is new oh my goodness it's fresh it was picked today fresh you eat this now what is it well, that's what the children of Israel used to say. What is it? Manna. Manna. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is this new stuff we're eating? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's manna. It's the word of God. It's the new word. Fresh. You think your mom and dad going to keep giving you rotten food for the rest of your life? You think your father in heaven is not going to give you fresh food every day now? Come on. Why are you stuck in that shirk fitna of religion world of those dead man graves? Eating that foul, dirty fucking shit that isn't even, that's been proven it's not proper translation by me. Think about that for a minute. It was a shock to me as well, everyone, when I found out, when God told me about it, and I was all by myself. God told me about it? Psh, shocking to me. Shocking to me. I didn't know what to go, where to do. I, I was lost. I was like, holy smoke. I can't be in religions no more. What the fuck is that shit? Once you know, once you know, I can't go do that anymore. <laughs> Because I know I'd be sinning. I myself would be breaking my own new food command that I have. That's why people say, oh, you'll, 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 you'll join us, you'll join. I will never join into no damn religion. That's why the Hadith says, I don't practice your religion. I'm a non-practitioner. 
because I have my own. It's not a religion, though. It's it's servitude. I serve God. It looks like a religion to people. But it's just the, a way that we live. So people call us strange. We are, we are different. We are strange. We do not do what you do. We don't live like you live. So they would say that we are strange. And then you want to try to be like me and claim it in that manner way. Because I hear people, they go around, we are not like those people, infidels. We are not like the West. We don't live like the West. We have our own... No, that's not the way you say it. You're like everybody else, you fuckboys. You're in your shirt business as well. The way I'm trying to say it is how you say it and use it to say in that manner. And the only people who can say that are the priests, are the servants, the prophets, the ones that are chosen by God. We appear godly because God is with us. If God was not with us, we would not appear godly to you at all, period. You're just hearing words that sound godly. The prophet is sinner. I'm a sinner. We all sin. The only reason you think it, think these men are in your human mind is because you're hearing these words that that's God. God, that's stuff. Me, on the other hand, this, oh, this stuff is nothing. It's nothing. It's pointless, useless. He go, he go, raise up another guy. He don't need me. <laughs> but it's wonderful to know. Yes, I am. I am happy that I know God personally. Yes, it is a very wonderful thing to know. Because I have no worries and things like you guys do. I have, I, 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 I did. That's why I know how wonderful it is. Because I knew my state. I knew the season and the state I once was in. You don't know. You don't know until it's happened. You'll never know. You'll never understand. So that's why I lay down my life. No greater love as a man than to lay down his life for another. <coughs> Will I lay down my life for you? No. For any human? Never. I only lay down my life for Isa, Yeshua. Because he did it for me. So in return, I do it for him. You understand? You did it. You did, you did not do nothing for me. Fuck you. You didn't do shit for me. I'm not going to lay down my life for you. I'm not going to fight your nation's war. You're an Afghan. You fight your own war. You don't like the Taliban? You kick them out of your nation. Why do I have to come to your land? To help you. Right? We look at it in this manner. And in reality, you should be your brother's keeper. But my brother don't want to listen. He don't listen to me. So the Taliban, he, he taken over his land. He don't like to listen to the truth, my brother. He's stupid. So we go, go back home. We go back to our nation. We're going home. You lied to us. You, you tricked us. You fooled around. You played games. You really not want to, to know the truth. You didn't want God. So now look what you got. You reject God. God rejects you. That's the way it works. 
Can you go back? Yeah, you can get back with God and then God will throw them out. But you have to have the truth. That's why I'm on the Facebook in Afghanistan. To teach the truth. To give you the truth. To give you a reason to fight. Be able to fight against doctrine. You can fight doctrine now. You couldn't fight mullahs. How could you fight a mullah who had doctrine? Backed by a religion. That was the foundation of your very existence of who you are. How could you ever fight something like that? You need a sword. You need the word. You need the kalamet. Mean Allah. And that's Isa. Do you... you they don't realize this. The Muslim, they don't... It's like I go to the Muslim. Muslim, you want to go to battle? Yeah, jihad, jihad, yeah, yeah, we do, we do. Okay, we're going to have a good sword, right? The good sword, yeah, we got the good sword. Oh, we ready, we ready. Do you know what the sword is? Oh, yeah, it's, it's here, we got it. Uh, no, no. The sword is the word of God. When, when Allah wants to fight, He swings His word around. And His word will cut you down. He just has to say it. You understand? So if you don't have the word, how are you going to fight terrorists? If you don't have the word, how are you going to kick out uh, Taliban? If you don't have the word, how are you going to get rid of ISIS from amongst your folds and flocks that are foul, teaching radical ideologies? If you don't have the true word, you can never get rid of The only thing that can get rid of the word, uh, of foul, is the word. It's, that's not hard to understand. See, when everybody gets off their high horse of religions and who's right and who's wrong, and you get and you get away from all of that shit and you get down to the actual human being. If you don't eat for two weeks, it's gonna hurt. If, if, if the sun gets really, really hot and there is no wind blowing and no rain falling, it's not very fun as a human being to live. Understand? There are many things already that you have forgotten that are in the living that are living worship like 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 you know when you're following God you following God you are you doing it in the living or are you only doing it in a temple masjid or when you do your five prayer re repetitions and all that is that you're praising God see how short that is compared to what I'm trying to teach you about the living It's hot outside, man. It's so hot, you're reminded of God, right? You know, God made, oh, man, you're... Re the living reminds you all day of God. If you make yourself aware. So all day is, is, is praying. All day is, is living in the... The Word. The Kalamet. All day is living in this manner. If you, if you understand what I'm saying... There are breaks in the seasons. Yeah, sometimes there's nothing happening in the word going on for you, and it's break time. You know this or that, but but majority of it, you can make it all. You go in it. But uh, I just find it funny that people are so out of touch 
with with what really is religion in the manner of Enos, <clears throat> not Enoch. I'm talking Enos. Uh, Adam had son Seth, and Seth had a son, and Methuselah. I believe had son named Enos. It's very close to Adam. Maybe only four generations it took. But on that fourth generation, a, a man born named Enos. And it says in the Torah, in those days, at that time, in those days, man began to call upon the name of God. So they had it at one time. And then the flood took place. If you read it, it, it tells you there was the name of God was known. They didn't do shirk. There was no religion type thing or deals, no rituals that people did. None of that. But if you look at it, it says that in the days of Enos, in those days, man began to call upon the name of God. And it was wonderful to live in that time period. Great things was in that time period. But then man fell, began to fall, and consume each other, and lie to each other, and, and lost the truth. And it says it tells you what it did. The Nephilim were on the earth. And then God fled the whole earth. Kill everybody. Start anew. And then he, he gave it to us again. Through Miriam. He gave it to us again. And now we lost it again. Now look, we lost it. What do you think he's going to do? Well, we got two options. We can try to bring it back. Well, if we don't bring it back, God going to punish us again. And that's written that he, that's what he does as well. So you better hope to God that I am who I am. Otherwise, it doesn't look very good for your futures. Think about that. You're thinking of glamour changing. Cha Imam Mahdi is going to change the world like the movies. No. We don't live in the fucking movies. We live in reality. We live in the living. So like I said, you're lucky. The world's lucky that the word is here. You just got to find it. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Goodbye, Poya.